first signs of fall are here, which means we are seeing pumpkins and butternut squash everywhere. And I just wanted to celebrate the start of the season by making this creamy butternut squash curry udon. So let's get to it. We're gonna chop our butternut squash into one inch cubes. Make sure you're using your sharpest knife and stick it into the center like so, and then bring it down on one side to create a split. Then do the same on the other side. Now, as you can see, the stem of the squash was really tough, so I sliced it off and now my knife can cut through it to make that split. Clean out the seeds and you can throw them out or if you want, you can clean and roast them and use them in salads. Next, set it down on the flat side for stability and cut them into half moons. Lay them flat and cut into 1 inch cubes. Try and cut them to be the same size so that they cook evenly in the oven. Next, add the butternut squash into a large mixing bowl and pour in a generous glug of olive oil. Season with salt and pepper and add 1 tablespoon of SNB curry powder. Now, this curry powder is not the same as the curry powder you will find in the spice aisle of your neighborhood grocer. The SNB curry powder has a mix of very spices that create the Japanese curry flavor. It has turmeric, coriander, fenugreek, cumin, etc. I will link it in the description below or you can find it in your neighborhood Japanese market. Now back to the butternut squash, we've added 1 tablespoon of the SNB curry powder. We're just going to mix it up until the squash is coated with the curry powder and olive oil. Next, place the squash onto a foil lined baking sheet and spread it out but using only half the sheet. Now I love hearty vegetables so we're also going to cut up some broccoli. I also have no issues eating the stem of the broccoli, so we're just going to cut the stem right off and then cut them into smaller bite-sized pieces. We're going to separate the florets and cut them to be roughly the same size each. Now we're going to cut the carrots in the Japanese rangiri style. First. Cut the carrots at a sharp angle and then roll it one quarter way towards you and cut it again. Roll it again and cut and then repeat until you finish the carrots. Now add the broccoli and carrots into the same mixing bowl you used before. Add a glug of olive oil and season with salt and pepper. This time, we're going to skip the curry powder. Whatever is left in the bowl is enough to season it. Mix it through and then spread them out onto the other half of the baking sheet. I love some salty crispy bacon with my sweet butternut squash, so we're going to crisp up some bacon. Just lay out some thinly sliced bacon onto a foil lined baking sheet and then let's put everything into the oven. The oven should be preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to cook the bacon for 10 minutes the broccoli for 20 and the butternut squash for 35 minutes. In the meantime, we can heat up our dashi. We just need it to get hot so that it can help emulsify the butternut squash later. We're also going to take out some peas to defrost. When the bacon is ready, pour out the fat and then once it has cooled down, cut it into smaller pieces and set it aside. When the broccoli and carrots are ready, we're going to remove it from the oven and place the butternut squash back in the oven for another 15 minutes. Finally, when the butternut squash is ready, you should be able to smash it with a fork like this. Now take all the butternut squash and put it in a blender. Add half the dashi and then put the main lid on while keeping the smaller lid off so that the steam can escape. Cover the hole with a kitchen towel and blend the squash. Begin with short pulses to get it going and then move it into low to medium speed. 
Remove the lid and check for consistency. Then add more curry powder, salt, and a little bit more dashi and blend again. To finish off, add a splash of heavy cream and a little bit of yakisoba sauce to tie it all together. I'm using store-bought yakisoba sauce and you can use tonkatsu sauce or make your own at home. I will have more instructions on that in my blog and I'll link it down below. Continue to blend until you've reached the consistency that you like. Adding more dashi if you want the sauce to be runnier and you know keeping it as is if you want it to be thick and creamy. Now let's talk about the udon noodles. I recommend using the frozen udon noodles for this recipe. They're really soft and pillowy. Just avoid the vacuum packed udon if you can. Before you cook the noodles, use the same boiling water to blanch the peas that we defrosted earlier. Just drop them in for about 45 seconds to a minute and then remove. Then drop your noodles in slowly, not like how I just did. The hot water will splash everywhere. So lower them slowly into the hot water. And these noodles are already cooked, so they just need to be heated through. Wiggle it around to loosen the noodles, then after a minute, we can remove it from the heat and assemble our dish. So, I'm going to divide the noodles into my bowls, and then I'm going to add a generous serving of the curry. Gently mix to coat the noodles in curry, and then add the vegetables on top of it. And finally, add the crispy bacon to complete the dish. so well together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really good. The broccoli goes really good with it. Mm -hmm. and it gives it that like a charred, that char flavor is like really nice. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. All right, all right. Um, butternut squash curry udon. That is extremely unique and unexpected. And it sounds really tasty. <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? <laughs>